NISBA News is supported by the New York Schools Insurance Reciprocal. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of NISBA Newsmakers with me, Tim Creamer, the Executive Director of the New York State School Boards Association. My guest today is Jim Malatris, President of the Rockefeller Institute for Government. Jim is here to discuss what the Institute does related to education, its role in research projects, and how the research is used. Prior to arriving at the Institute, Jim held several high-ranking positions in New York State government. Most recently, he served as Director of State Operations to Governor Andrew Cuomo, where he managed the day-to-day -day operations of state government and served as the administration's point person on policy. Jim received his bachelor's, master's, and Ph.D. in political science from the University at Albany. Jim, tell me a little bit about the Rockefeller Institute. What is this institute? The Rockefeller Institute was something created about 40 years ago of former Rockefeller employees when he was the governor. And what they wanted to do was provide nonpartisan, evidence-based public policy research for policymakers, not even just in New York State, but across the nation. And they focused on a couple of different areas, fiscal policy, healthcare policy, education policy, and something called federalism, which is just a complicated way of saying the interaction between state, federal, and local governments. So from there, it has, it has grown and grown and grown into what it is today, which is a pretty vibrant, uh, nonpartisan public policy research institute that is situated within the SUNY system. Another thing that uh, I know that your organization has uh, written some information about uh, recently was the potential Supreme Court case that might deem agency shop fees that unions collect as being unconstitutional. And here in New York, it would appear that the unions are attempting to kind of inoculate themselves from that. What do you know about that? Okay. What we're finding, what would be the impact of this decision? So the new Supreme Court justice was just appointed. We think he's going to go with the majority. Gorsuch. Gorsuch yep. is going to go with saying you can't mandate union fees or dues if you don't want to opt into the system. In New York State, we found, we said, what does that mean if that does happen? A potential of impact, they collect about $500 million a year in union fees. Right. And we've looked at uh, different historical situations uh, from the teachers union in the uh, early 80s and the TWU, which is the transit workers for the MTA, when they lost their rights to collect dues automatically, and there was a real impact. We're yeah, not I, re I read some things that happened in the past I did not know about. Millions of dollars of losses yeah. and members lost. And then how does that affect policymaking in New York State and how that balance of power in Albany? We don't opine on whether that's right or wrong. Now, people have come out using our evidence on some side saying, yeah, that's, we should have the right to opt in or opt out. You shouldn't tell us what we have to do. Others say, no, you're, we have a strong union movement in the state. We just put out the analysis, right. which was really interesting. I don't think people fully understood how dramatic a decision like that could actually be. Constitutional convention. Every 20 years, the state of New York has an opportunity to have a constitutional convention. And the people have to vote on whether or not they want one. And that vote takes place this year. Right. And then the constitutional convention would take place in a year or two. Correct. What is the risk of having a constitutional convention? What the, uh, Why would somebody object to it? Opponents have said, it's interesting, that you don't want to lose the rights that we have. You have the right to free common education in our Constitution. You have the right to health care. Uh, you have the right to housing and social welfare in our Constitution. Those, we have a right to pensions in our Constitution. That could all get reversed, especially in the current political environment. And they raise some of the issues. How you select the delegates is problematic. I've heard they're, that. They're selected by Senate district. And that drives a certain outcome, and if you do it that way, so that's been some of the argument. There's, the opponents have made the argument, the burden of proof is on the people who want it. And you haven't made enough of a case about why you want to do this. Um, we have people on the other side uh, that have recently opined on our, our Rockefeller blog, ethics is the question of the day. Yep. You're not going to reform, you can't, it's, no one reforms themselves, oh. and that's, you don't, in your industry, you have outside groups put together bylines and stuff because you don't do it. The financial industry has government to oversee it. Uh, people get regulated from outside groups. In government, it's a little different because lawmakers pass laws and the governor signs laws. They uh, govern themselves. Law. They govern themselves. Yeah. And so the proponents have said, 
why we need a constitutional convention now more than ever is for strong ethics reform. They've yeah. used that as the impetus. But the opponents have said, well, you can't limit what is talked about in the Constitutional Convention, which is true. I've heard somebody say to me that one of the things that they con are concerned about is big money yeah. will come in and they will drive the agenda. What would big money want? Well, I think what the opponents are su suggesting is it's going to be on the, um, the worker rights side. They think those interests are going to roll back pensions and workers' rights that we've had built into the Constitution. Jim, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Thank a you so much. This has you. been great. Stay tuned to Nisbet News to see positive stories occurring in school districts all around New York State and for new Newsmaker segments. On behalf of my colleagues at Nisbet, have a great day.